Greetings everyone, update 29.3 is live on PC, but before we cover the patch notes for the update, Nezure Prime Access has launched on all platforms, and of course includes Nezure Prime, the Guandeo Prime, and the Zakti Prime. The relics for those items on PC are up on your screen if you need them. The Prime accessories for this round include the Rancher Prime Armor Set, the Buran Prime Ephemera, and a 90 day Affinity and Resource Booster. The aforementioned items are available for real cash via the Prime Access page on the Warframe website if you want to get them. Mesa Prime, the Achigara Prime and Redeemer Prime have had their relics removed from the drop table in-game and entered into the Prime Vault. With that removal, the new Locust Sacrifice of Mesa Prime Systems has been replaced with the Titania Prime Systems. As for the Steel Meridian Sacrifice of the Redeemer Prime Blade, it has been replaced with the Zuge Prime String. As usual, the Riven Dispositions have been updated alongside the release of a near Prime Access, and I will have a video released after this one that will cover all the numbers of change. As for the update itself, Nezha now has a Leverian exhibit available through the Codex or Nezha's profile page. Nightwave Series 3 Glassmaker has received its fifth and final story segment available through the Nightwave menu. On top of this release, DE have added an extra 30 prestige ranks to the Nightwave track. Mastery Rank 30 and its test is now available to access and acquire in-game. Once players reach Mastery Rank 30, they will receive 3 Umbra Former, 15 loadout slots, 30 Riven mod slots, the True Master chat emoji, the True Master emote, and the True Master Sumdali hull ornament for landing crafts. And they will also acquire the True Master's font relay blessing that can be enabled within any relay once every 23 hours. Enabling the blessing grants players within the relay at the time a boost to either affinity, credit, resources, damage, health, or shields for 3 hours. Now after Mastery Rank 30, players will need to earn the same amount of affinity between Mastery Rank 29 and 30 to progress into the next tier, which is classified as Legendary Tiers. Now as for the changes within the update, the Mastery Rank icon has been updated with new details to coincide with the UI 3.0 Vitruvian theming. Entrati member names will no longer appear when Creator Mode is enabled. ZE have clarified the daily standing bar value by adding the word remaining to it. They have also adjusted the Night Hunter Cyandana wing spread idle animation slightly based on its creator's feedback. They have also removed the Latrox Une from the Simulacrum, and in the follow up hotfix of 29.3.0.1, DE increased accuracy and reduced the recoil of the primary Catch Moon kit gun when used with the Tremor and Steady Slam grips. As quote, this change was planned for the upcoming infested kit guns, but needed to squeak in early for the Riven disposition changes. With that said, we go to the optimizations of the update. DE optimized terrain rendering, the initial download size by 100 megabytes, geometry on the Cambian Drift to improve frame rate, rendering slightly when Bloom is disabled. They also improved detection of runtime errors in the script system, made systemic micro-optimizations to all code on Windows and Xbox One, made a micro-optimization to splash effects on the water surface, a systemic micro-optimization to the memory allocator, a micro-optimization to the physics system, effects system, and script runtime. And lastly, they fixed CPU times increasing significantly when frequently switching between controller and keyboard. Lastly, to conclude the video, we have fixes across update 28.3 and hotfix 28.3.0.1. DE fixed a crash that could occur if you lose connection to a host shortly after connecting to a new mission, a rare crash that could occur with certain weapons with extreme mod configurations, a crash in the simulacrum while firing a Convetrix that had max ranked tainted shell and narrow barrel mods equipped. They fixed a loss of functionality if you open the pause menu with the controller and fast travel to a vendor while a profit taker heist bounty is counting down. Pausing during the countdown is no longer possible. They fixed aggressive spot load when hovering over quest locked nodes in the star chart. The Latrox Une sample collection bounty phase taking longer than intended to complete due to the samples not dropping in their entirety. They also noted, we found that 20% of the time a sample was meant to drop 
but it wouldn't. They fixed Trinity's blessing fully restoring health and shields of mission objectives as it should only restore 500 health over 5 seconds. They fixed Mirage's Total Eclipse Augment mod buff being shared with Necromex, the Split Flight buff not resetting if the buff expires when in Titania's Razor Wing, they fixed Umbra's Sentience not functioning after transferring into a Necromech, they also fixed an inability to close the end of mission screen after failing a sortie defense mission and waiting to close the end of mission screen until you were back in the orbiter. They fixed some spawning range issues with the Deimos Jugulus due to them frequently spawning very close to each other, and apparently this could cause other enemies to not spawn as frequent due to the amount of Jugulus present. They fixed snow weather data in the Orb Valis, overriding the rain weather data that was intended for the Plains of Eidolon, which was causing way more frequent precipitation than desired. They fixed Syndicate Standing earned in Elite Sanctuary Onslaught not being displayed on the Mission Progress screen. The UI not displaying 1 when you have selected a single Entrati token. Stats for the Kuva Injector and Demolus Codex entries. They fixed Black Shadows being cast on Star Chart Node Transmission cards if a transmission is played. They fixed the Unreadable Pause menu after opening the menu while fading to black due to a teleport volume. They fixed the Helminth XP gain UI effect getting stuck on screen, losing chat functionality when attempting to report a player while they enter extraction, blown out Perrin sequence and Red Veil Syndicate leaders when interacting with them in the relay, or Valis free roam music playing in Fortuna. They fixed audio issues for Nezha's Divine Spears ability slam sound, audio issues for fully charged Trumna sound for the host and client, some popping animations with the Night Hunter Cyan Dana, missing daughter Naburus voiceover lines, some missing Otak Idol voiceover lines, a script error when casting Titania's tribute ability, losing ability casting and weapon functionality when casting Gauss's Thermal Sunder ability, Equinox's Duality Spectre not using your secondary weapon if you don't have a primary weapon in your loadout, Prex decorations having a large red box around it when selected instead of just the outline. And lastly, they fixed a script error when being hit by a glass shard in the Nightwave boss fight. And that concludes the patch notes for update 29.3 and hotfix 29.3.0.1. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the Riven Disposition video tomorrow.